Saturday Night Theatre. We present Malice at Autumn's End by John Hyatt with John Bentley, Margot Boyd and John Gabriel. Malice at Autumn's End. Well done, Sister Alice. Oh, thank you, Father. Uh, have you finished hearing confessions? Yes, we'd better get a move on or we miss the opening of the fete. You know what the traffic's like on a Saturday afternoon. Oh, a late comer. Oh, today of all days. Why, it's that woman. Hmm? What woman? I saw her early this morning in the park. She was behaving very oddly, almost as though she was being hunted. Oh. Poor thing. Oh, dear, what a dreadful black eye. Uh, she does seem to be looking round rather nervously. See if you can help her, will you, sister? I'll wait in the confession, or in case she wants me. Good afternoon. Oh. Are you... Oh, you startled me. Is it... The... I've seen you somewhere before. Early this morning in Highfield Park. I was going to speak to you, but when you saw me, you ran away. Is there anything I can do? I want to see a priest. It's urgent. Is there one here? There's Father Nicholson. He's hearing confessions at the moment, uh, just over there. Oh, thank you. You're, you're just in time to catch him. He's due at the church fete at 2.15. We've got an important celebrity opening it. George Catesby, yes, I know. Excuse me, I mustn't keep the priest waiting. George Catesby? I wonder why she called him that. Me, Father, for I have sinned. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. How long is it since your last confession? I don't. I haven't come to confess. I just wanted to tell someone, someone who can help. I thought you'd be the best person. Would you rather see me in the sacristy? It would be more comfortable. No, no. I, it's better like this, private. I, I said I didn't want to confess, but I do. I must. There may not be another chance. People, Father, I must betray them. They're evil, wicked. I didn't think so at first. I didn't believe it. Uh, just a minute. You want to tell me about something wicked. Is it also criminal? Yes, yes, criminal. And are you guilty of this crime? I've, I've stolen something. I, I see. But that's only part of it. There's much more, much worse. Well, tell me. It's my husband. They're going to kill him. Did you hear what I said? It's true. Well, I heard you. Are you quite sure? Of course I'm sure. I was there when they planned it. Last night I walked in in the middle of it. He knows all about them, you see, and he's making his knowledge public. They're frightened to death of him. You say they? The witches, Father. The witches in this town. They meet every week, an organised coven. You'd never know it. It's so secret. They don't want to be found out. They're serious, dedicated. They worship Apollyon. Apollyon. Oh, it's another name for it, the devil. I see. My husband and I never got on. We never saw eye to eye. I tried to make alliances, but he was so full of his own importance. You are not here to criticise others. Let's take things one at a time, shall we? You say these people have uttered threats. They mean them. They do. They mean murder. If you'd seen them last night, I, I could feel the hate. They turned and looked at me. I could see the malice in their eyes. Keep calm. I ran, but they started to chase me. They knew I'd never agree to that, to, to murder. Now listen to me. I've been hiding in the park all night. Oh, Father, you must believe me. I'm not that bad. Father, I, I don't know what to do. I will tell you what to do. This is not a matter I can deal with effectively. Surely you can see that. The police can help me. Oh, no. No, no, the police. Not in this case. Oh, no. Oh, no. Father, the witches, they'll kill me too now. I'm as dangerous as my husband. Please, please. Here's my rosary. I want you to take it. I want you to see that it's buried with me. Promise now, me. No, this has gone far enough. Now, listen to me. Be quiet and listen. <gasps> What's that? Listen. Oh, there's someone out there in the church. They followed me. Oh, God! Uh, sounds as though the opening ceremony is well underway, sister. 
nearly 15 minutes late. It wasn't your fault, Father. The traffic at Harper's Corners. Ah, Mr. Capper won't accept that as an excuse. He'll say we should have started earlier. Well, if we had, you wouldn't have been able to help that poor woman in the church. Mr. Capper should have learned by now. He can't always take priority. Even if he did have a distinguished career in the police force. Yeah, well, this is hardly the moment to tell him that. For the next three hours or so, he's selling his autograph at sixpence a time. Well, I'd better make my apologies before he gets into his stride. But who's that over there? Uh, where? There's a man prowling around those parked cars. He's seen us. It seems we've disturbed a car thief. He didn't look that time. No, he didn't. And I'm sure I've seen him before. Oh, look at that car, Father. That's Mr. Capper's car. Really? Well, well, well. Perhaps we've done the old man a favor by being late. Right, let's see. Everything ready? Pen, ink, blotting paper. Oh, good afternoon, Lady Norton. In look with the weather, eh? Cash box. I'll keep that under the eye. Good afternoon, Mr. Capper. Oh, Father Nicholson. Glad to see you could make it at last. I really must apologize before you're all besieged with autograph hunters. Think nothing of it, Father. I know you're a busy man. I've already apologized to Lord Catesby on your behalf. He's a busy man, too. And an important one besides. And he only agreed to open this fate as a personal favor to me. Oh, yes, yes, I, I know. But as one of the leading Anglo-Catholics in this country and the owner of the Sunday Record, he's entitled to a bit more than common courtesy. I'm telling you, sir. You'll have to excuse me now, Father. We're all busy this afternoon. And this looks like my first customer. Yes, well, let's, uh, let's hope you have a successful afternoon. I'll, I'll see you later. Aye. Hey. Good afternoon, sir. Nice to have you with us. I don't have to ask what I can do for you, eh? I'd rather not, Mr. Capper. I promised my youngster I'd get your autograph. She's an avid reader of the Sunday Record. Oh, reading my memoirs, is she? We all are, sir. I'm finding them of particular interest. Oh? My name's Hagel, Detective Inspector, Whitchurch Crime Squad. Well, 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 we must have a drink sometime. You must come along to the section house, sir. An ex-copper with your reputation would do wonders for morale. Oh, that's very pleasant of you, Mr. Hagel. I will. There. Ah, uh, there's the autograph. Thank you. I hope your daughter approves. I should be thrilled to bits. Uh, sixpence, if you please. In the box. Oh, that's very, very generous. All in a good cause. I mustn't hold out the queue. Uh, see you soon, Mr. Capper. I look forward. Good afternoon, young lady. Got your autograph book with you? Good. Oh! Terrible, sorry. You nearly knocked me over. This half me cup of tea gone. Huh? Oh, well. It's quite a chapter of accidents you're getting through lately, Mrs. What uh, do you mean? I take it that black eye was as much an accident as me knocking into you. Or did Tom give it to you in one of his more affectionate moments? Who are you? I've seen you. My name's Hagel. You've seen me at the club, I expect. That's why I've seen you. Mrs. Doyle, they say your name is, but I know Tom better than that. Is he here this afternoon? No. I didn't think it was quite his line of country. I didn't think it was yours, come to that. You never can tell, can you? Excuse me, I must... Would you like a cup of tea? No, no, I'm in a hurry. Oh, his gratitude. She's in more than a hurry, she's in a panic. Yeah. Heading for old Capper's stall. It's funny. She's no autograph hunter. Nearly four o'clock. Everything seems to be going well. All right in here, sister? Yes, father. Even in spite of the heat. Good. Oh, these tea urns are the nearest I've been yet to hellfire. <laughs> uh, did you make your peace with Mr. Capper? Uh, well, I opened negotiations. Uh, sister, I can't get that woman out of my mind, the one in the church. I wondered if she might be somewhere in this crowd. I haven't seen her, but I've just remembered something odd that she said. Oh, when I mentioned that we got a celebrity opening the fete, she said, George Catesby, yes, I know. But, but how is that odd? She called him George. Well? Well, most people would have said Lord Catesby. They wouldn't have known his Christian name. Ah, yes, you've got a point there. And I've got another one. Who is the only person we know who's on intimate terms with Lord Catesby? Barnard Capper. Exactly. Well, I... I think I'll start circulating with a tea tray. I've earned a break from this furnace. Yes. Uh, if that frightened woman knows Lord Catesby, then it's perfectly possible she knows Mr. Capper as well. Indeed. I, I, I'll keep my eyes.
eyes open, Father, and let you know if I see her. Watch yourself with that tray, sister. I saw you'll spill the lot. <laughs> Why are you roaming round the field, Mr. Capper? What's happened to your public? I've been sitting on a hard chair signing my name for nearly two hours. And I think I've earned a break. Oh, don't worry about the takings. Father Ward's got his eye on them. Uh, is one of those cups of tea going begging? If you would help yourself. Right. Oh, my, that's hot. <laughs> but that's what a cup of tea should be. I gather, Mr. Capper, that you find it hard to forgive Father Nicholson for missing Lord Catesby's opening address. Well, can you blame me, sister? I went to a lot of personal trouble. Well, the traffic was really very congested. And if Father Nicholson had been here on time, he would have been on the platform and not in the car park at half past two. And if he'd been on the platform, he wouldn't have disturbed the man prowling round your car. Man? What man? Actually, it was Mr. Doyle. I couldn't put a name to him at the time, but I... Doyle? He runs a club down on the docks. I've seen him once or twice when I've been visiting in the area. Well, well, well. You know him, Mr. Capper? I know about him. Any copper could smell Tom Doyle a mile off. Interfering with my car, eh? Oh, I didn't say that. I'd better look into this. Uh, but it was two hours ago and he ran off. Yes, sister. Put that tray down and come with me to the car park. If there's anything missing, I'll want you as witness. Oh, but I... Excuse uh, me, Mrs. Harris. We're going to leave this tray on your stall a minute. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Right. Come on, sister. I, uh, I, I don't suppose you know a woman with chestnut hair aged about 35, do you, Mr. Capper? She's wearing a, a floral print dress, and she has an, an unfortunate black eye. I'm rather anxious she to... She was around earlier this afternoon. Why? Who is she? I hoped you might be able to tell me. What makes you think that? Something she said. Uh, what is it, Mr. Capper? What's wrong? Oh, oh, that poor woman. Look, the lid of the boot must have fallen on her neck. Don't touch her. Get the St. John's ambulance. There's a crime squad man somewhere in the field. Crime? That boot didn't fall. It's been slammed down on her neck. Mr. Capper, was I right? Did you know her? I, I knew her sister. She was my wife. I'm sorry we've had to meet again under these circumstances, Mr. Capper. I'd hoped for a much happier occasion. So would I, Agro. So would I. And I'm sorry we've had to curtail your fate, Vicar, but you do see... Yeah, of course, of course. Well, I suppose we might take advantage of being in the refreshment tent and have a cup of tea. I, uh, I understand from that sensible lady, the nun, I uh, called her sister, is that right? That's quite right, but Sister Alice is a deaconess, not a nun. Oh, is she? Well, Sister Alice tells me you saw Mrs. Capper earlier this afternoon, Vicar. Yes, she came to St. Matthew's in a very distraught state. I can't tell you what was said because she came to confession. But she seemed frightened out of her wits. She was crying, hysterical. Ah, she was always hysterical. Always dramatizing the slightest thing. I suppose you feel I owe you an explanation, Father. No, not unless... Ah, oh, come off it. I've been living in this town six months. You must think it peculiar. I never said I was married. Well, I took it for granted you were a widower. Ah, no, just what you were meant to do, you and everybody else. I'd always planned to retire to Midport. During my last months of service, Vera used to come here looking for a likely house. That was how she met the man she left me for. Some man, I must say. String of convictions as long as your arm. Assault, robbery with violence. Yeah, he trades on that. It's part of his appeal. And he's 20 years younger than I am. You wonder I wanted to keep it secret? <laughs> right, silly fool I'd have looped if that story had got out. Fine scandal for a man in my position. Well, surely it was bound to leak out eventually. Not bound to, no. There was always the hope that she might come back. <laughs> Pretty poor hope that turned out. She cared for you, I can assure you of that. Had a funny way of showing it. Well, it's done now. I've not a hope in hell of keeping this quiet. Just have to get used to the sneers and the sympathy. Oh, I don't think many people will sneer. Soon find out, won't we? Mm, we'll soon find out a lot of things. Now, my impression when I saw Mrs. Capper this afternoon was that she was frightened. Well, you bear that out, Vicar. 
Do you also confirm my suspicion that she was frightened of Tom Doyle? I thought I made it clear she came to confession, even under these circumstances. She told I... you, though, didn't she? You should know better than to ask that, Mr. Cabra. Must have. Look, she came Witches. to me... That's what she was scared of. The witches operate in that club. Doyle's club? Down on the docks it is in Gus Street, a place called the Devil's Kitchen. You know it, Father? No, I don't. But you say it's in Dockland. That's another parish, St. Mary's. Oh, you're not serious about this, Mr. Capper. Why, this witchcraft thing is just a gimmick of Doyle, something to interest the customers. No one's meant to take it seriously. You've never come across a case of witchcraft before, have you? Take it from me. It's the filthiest thing a copper ever has to soil his hands on. You'll find out, Eagle. <laughs> People laugh at witchcraft now or think it's something long dead that was nasty. Well, it's nasty, all right. You know, ritualistic murder isn't that uncommon today. Mr. Capper, you mustn't get this tragedy out of perspective. You think it's just a gimmick too, don't you? I tell you, Father, I know about witches. I just lost my wife through those devils. I can't see the logic of that, I'm afraid. I'm not yet convinced your wife wasn't the victim of a ghastly accident. Accident? Look, the lid of that boot was slammed down. It didn't fall. There was nothing wrong with the mechanism. If it had just fallen, then it might have knocked her out. But her neck was broken. It was slammed down on the back of her neck. And you call that a ritual murder by witches? The ritual induces the murder. Do I have to spell it out for you? Vera wanted to spell it out for you. Vera wanted to get out of that coven, but the witches thought otherwise. Oh, that's just guesswork. I'm afraid so. It's informed guesswork based on professional experience. They held one of their obscene ceremonies. And under the guise of that ritual, they conceived her death. Oh, for heaven's sake. It's an absurd idea. I agree. Well, why should they want to kill her anyway? This isn't the Middle Ages. Nothing to stop anyone being a witch nowadays, if that's what they want. There's a social stigma, man. That's why they need to keep their identity secret. Suppose you were one of them. And someone threatened to tell your wife you'd been indulging in orgies and sacrificing to Satan. You wouldn't like it, would you? Oh, I'd feel a damn fool. Ah, but you'd do something about it, which is more to the point. We're not dealing with rational, sensible people here, Hegel. We're up against a gang of sick, perverted dropouts with a lot to lose. You know, I can't understand why you haven't done something before this. Both of you I'm talking to, this bestiality's been under your noses for at least six months. And neither of you's done a damn thing to stop it. You said yourself the whole thing's secret. Certainly, I didn't but know But it's what... your duty to find out. The witches are anti-everything you stand for. They always have been down the long, dark centuries, but they're not vindictive today any more than the Christians they oppose. Not vindictive? They put a spell on my Vera. Lord help me. Mr. Capper, you're distressed. Ah, oh, come you're on. You're under it. a strain, so you blame other people for your loss. The witches. I blame the witches. Well, no one else will. Look, I've lived in this town for nine years. I know how these people behave. If you put around a story like this, you'll be looked on as a crack. We'll see about that. In a fortnight's time, the Sunday Record is due to publish an episode of my memoirs, dealing with a case of witchcraft I handled in 1950. Well, I'm scrubbing that. As from now, there'll be a brand new article setting out the facts of this case. Hold on, Mr. Caffer. You've got a fortnight, Inspector Hagel, to get those facts. Less than a fortnight. Now, just a minute. I know what I'm doing. You'll do untold harm if you don't stop to think. I warn you. The harm has been done, man. I know how you feel, believe me. I do know how you feel. But that's why I ask you to take my advice. Forget this vendetta. Concentrate on your work, your book. First things first. Before I write another word, I'll smash these people. Flush them out. Finish them. But the witches killed my wife. Well, this is the place Kappa mentioned, Gas Street. There must be a sign hanging somewhere. Ah, here we are. The Devil's Kitchen, members only. Mm -hmm. A selective Satan. I wonder if the Devil's abroad at 10 in the morning. Hello there. Can I help you? Uh, good morning. I'm, uh, I'm looking for Mr. Tom Doyle. Found the first go, Father. Come on in. The door's open. Here we go. That's right, Father. Come on in. Thank oh. you. Takes me back, it does, to see the priest calling round this hour of the day. 
You're forgetting me a good name, Father. A priest now. Wouldn't be anything to do with this terrible business of Mrs. Capper, would it? Exactly that, I'm afraid, Mr. Doyle. I might have known. I've had a copper swarming all over the place since last Saturday, to say nothing of reporters. Too much publicity can give me a bad name. And now you, Father. No offence, but I don't see what your interest is. It's not as though Vera ever went to church. She came to see me at St. Matthew's just before she died. Oh, did she now? Well, I'm glad to hear it. I really am, Father. She'd have had a hell of a time if she'd died without the blessing of the church. Look, I don't... Oh, I to... beg your pardon. That wasn't meant in a frivolous manner. Not at all. I find it very reassuring that Vera should have gone back to the church. Makes a man feel there's always hope. Sort of a reflex action at the last. Do you think that's possible, Father? I think it's perfectly possible. But in Mrs. Capper's case, it's even more interesting to reflect on the cause of that reflex. She turned back to her faith so suddenly, almost as though she were driven. Oh, you're right. That is interesting. Uh, look, I'll be honest with you, Father. Six months ago, Vera left her husband and she's been living here with me ever since. Now, I know there's only one attitude you can take over a situation like that and I'll not hold it against you. But it was what she wanted. She came of her own free will, Father, and she stayed. She was happy here. Mm. Why did she leave? Leave, did you say? It's news to me she left. Look, Mr. Doyle, when I saw her, she was anything but happy. She was scared out of her wits. Something had terrified her beyond her reason. Did she tell you what it was? No, you know what it was. It happened here in the club late on Friday night when the customers had gone and only Vera Capo was left. Vera and a select handful of others, including you, Doyle. Don't hedge with me, man. You know what it was. You're very forceful, Father. And there's an awful lot you seem to know. I still don't see, though, what your interest is. I'd like to see your partner. Well, you're lucky to be seeing me at this hour of the morning. The partner's still in bed, I shouldn't wonder. Would you like to see the premises instead? Huh? Come on. I'll show you around. Doesn't look so good by day. No atmosphere, but I think you'll be impressed. Here we are. I'll draw the curtains. Lights. There. You're placed right in the heart of the devil's kitchen. Oh, you were wrong when you said there'd be no atmosphere. I can feel it. Evil, malice seeping out of the walls. You and Vera had a lot in common, Father. Your imagination is a touch of the Gaelic, to be sure. Have you is a... this where she stood on Friday night? If she'd come through that door, she'd have had a clear view of the altar. You do use this as an altar, don't you? What filth did she see, Doyle? What horror drove her to her death? That's enough of the demonstration. You're getting carried away, Father. Who's behind me, Doyle? Not you. You haven't got the flair for this. You put up the money and organized the club, but the ruling spirit isn't yours. I never claimed it was. Tom? Tom? Talk with the devil. Damn here, laggy! This is a busy morning, and no mistake. Here comes my partner now. There you are, Tom. I thought Aggie, I... Aggie, we've got a visitation from the church. Let me introduce you. Miss Agnes Craft, my partner. Oh, uh, sorry, Father. I, I don't even know your name. This is Father Nicholson, Tom. It's been a long time. How are you, Nick, my dear? Good morning, Sister Alice. Airing one of your charges? Yes, Mr. Kappa. Rosemary uh, has to have her walk. But you were certainly the last person I expected to see in the park. I thought you were busy with your memoirs, aren't you? Writing them and they're coming out in book form soon? They are. It's uh, partly that... that I uh... found last week's instalment in the record fascinating. You're a lucky man, Mr. Kappa, being able to fill your leisure hours in retirement. <laughs> You've been in the police force 25 years. You know what damage idle hands can do. I've seen it in this town. Here? Here in Midport. I'm talking about the witches, sister. Witches? You'll be saying next, like Hegel and Father Nicholson, that you had no idea of their existence. It was the witches who killed my wife. You've been a policeman a long time, Mr. Capper, so I suppose you must have evidence for what you're saying. I've got more than that. I've got the power to make those creatures sorry they were ever born. That's why I've come to see you. I need your help, Sister Alice. In what way? 
As you know, Lord Catesby, apart from being the owner of the Sunday record, is a personal friend of mine. I believe you have mentioned it. Well, I expect I have. It's a friendship I'm proud of. Now, Lord Catesby agrees with me that I should waive a forthcoming episode in the paper and publish instead an account of the witches in Midport. But how do you expect me to help you? I want you to type out the article. But why not use an agency? It's more than I dare do to risk an agency. This must be done in the utmost secrecy, sister. These people are dangerous. I'm sorry, Mr. Kappa. I really don't have the time. The parish needs me. Ah, you pamper the parish, sister. Let them stand on their own feet for a bit. I'm sorry, but I really don't have the time. I thought, as a Christian woman, you'd only be too glad to strike your blow against the evil in this town. Uh, this evil... You say you've mentioned it to Father Nicholson. What was his reaction? <laughs> Try to make out I was imagining things. Told me my experience didn't count. But he'll learn. He'll find out. There's evil in our midst, sister. There's always that. We fight it every day. Ah, but this is one fight when I'm on my own. Well, that's nothing new. I can fight again. And I don't expect me thanks for it, neither. No, that's very wise. People will laugh, you know. Have you thought of that? And some will be angry. You may take witchcraft seriously, but to the majority of people... I know a damn will... sight more about witches than you do, Sister Alice. I've dealt with them. They're not wicked old women in storybooks. They're devils. I'm sure you could make the details very convincing, Mr. Kappa. Why do you resent Father Nicholson's advice so strongly? Because I've got a feeling he's not to be trusted. That's absurd. Maybe, but it's a feeling that's been growing on me since Vera died. I can't ignore it, sister. I've had this feeling too often to ignore it. I hope to God I'm wrong. I know you are wrong. No. You just hope it, same as I do. If Nicholson's got some connection with this coven, then I'm done for. Really, Mr. I Cameron, told him, I don't you see? I told him I'm out to smash these people. If the witches get to know that, I'm finished. I'll end up dead, like Vera. Yes, it's been a long time, Nick. Fifteen years this autumn. And now you're in a spot again. We both are the same spot, Aggie. Another woman has died. Died of witches. Serve her right. Serve her... <coughs> you're not well. Here, come sit down. No. No, it's, it's the altitude. You should never have climbed that hill. And missed this magnificent view. Oh, the hell with it. There are too many things one should never have done. It's just a cough. You won't cure it in Midport. Doctors doubt that. I was sent here to recover. How long have you been here? Poor Nick. You can't get over the shock of seeing me, can you? Nearly a year. I hate this dirty, sprawling town. The sea air stinks. If you hate it that much, why stay? Why move? Nothing would change. Now even Oxford is a dead world. We had our good times there, Aggie. There are happy memories, too. Oh, our memories. Our dreams we cherished 15 years ago. I can do without those memories. They just accuse me now. As you'll have gathered, I didn't carve out the niche I dreamed of at Oxford. I've roamed and drifted for 15 years. And I end up in this huge, sordid town telling fortunes in Tom Doyle's club. Tom's making money, which is all he wants. And the appeal of the occult brings me the disciples that I want. Women like Vera Kappa? No, not women like Vera Kappa. I warned Tom at the time that woman would cause trouble. But you can't argue with a man like Tom. Well, he knows now I was right. Aggie, Doyle's a dangerous man with a record of criminal violence. It's more than likely that he killed Vera. I told you just now, she died of witches. She found out something and... She found out that you meant to kill her husband. You're well informed, my dear. Then it's true. But why? What harm's he done? Harm? You know his reputation and you ask what harm is done? For years, Barnard Cap has persecuted those who practice witchcraft. The Bradford witches, the Coven at Leeds, John Gordon, Wilkie. But they were criminals. Wilkie killed three women. And they weren't just criminals to Chief Inspector Capper. To him, they were victims because they abhorred his god. He hunted them down in hatred. And now he intends to mock them in his memoirs, to hold them up to ridicule in the Sunday record. 
Last Friday, we prayed to Apollyon and sacrificed in his name. We invoked the wrath of the devil and brought down death on that old man's head. On the Feast of All Hallows, Nick, Barnard Kappa will fall prey to his own victims. Vera knew what you'd done, didn't she? She walked right in and saw the doll we'd made in her husband's likeness torn to shreds before her eyes. And you killed her because she tried to warn him. She died because she was willing to betray us. Don't waste your tears on her. She wasn't worth it. How long have you known I was here? Since Saturday. I heard the name Apollyon. I... I could hardly believe my ears. No one has ever used that name but you. And then the memories came flooding back. Hmm? But not the happy ones. Haggy, you've got to get out of this town. You're right to believe that Kappa hates you. He's ridden with hatred. He's not concerned now with the witches of the past, but with you and the coven here in Midport. If he ever checks back on you... How close the past has come. You and I, Nick, threatened by a ghost that has been buried for 15 years. Don't worry, it'll come no closer. Barnard Kappa may glimpse it in the days that are left to him, but he'll not have time to lay the ghost. Aggie, don't be a fool. Kappa's watching you like a hawk, and so are the police. You've got to get out of Midport. I've got to get out of nowhere. All my life I've been hounded and chased. Now you try it for a change. You feel what it's like. Fifteen years ago, you were my most ardent supporter. You practiced the arts of magic then as fervently as I do now. What was it the Sunday Record headline said at the time? Classic students sacked for devil worship? It was the classics you were reading, wasn't it, before you wiped the slate clean and joined the Christian soldiers? Aggie, we both have a lot to lose. I have a lot, you have everything. If Kappa publishes that scandal, you're done for. You won't pick yourself up so easily this time. It wasn't easy last time. <laughs> well, there's a sight to behold. Look, down there by the azalea beds. I know your nuns have been emancipated, but I never expected to see one pushing a pram. Well, that's Sister Alice, one of our parish workers. Oh, that's done it. She's seen you. Poor old Nick. In an hour's time, the news will be all over Gas Street. The priest of St. Matthew's has been seen out walking with a witch. <laughs> Why, Sister Alice, this is a pleasant surprise. Not every day I come back to the office and find a deaconess waiting. I only called in... You'll have a cup the... of tea with me. Oh, thank you. Now, the usual, Sergeant, quick as you can. Bring an extra cup. I half expected to find Sir John waiting for me. He's been on my back all week, wanting to know when I'm going to find his wife's pearls for her. The Norton pearls? They've not been stolen. They have, you know. But when? She was wearing them at the fete on Saturday. Yeah, you were taken in the same as everyone else, sister. The pearls she was wearing on Saturday were a fake. Oh. The real Norton pearls disappeared a fortnight ago. Still, you've not come here to talk about missing jewels, have you? No, a, a missing person, actually. Inspector, have you seen Mr. Kappa lately? No, I've been counting his absence as one of my blessings. What do you mean by missing? Simply that no one's seen him since Monday. Oh? I've made several inquiries, but for the last three days he's not been seen or heard of in Midport. And his wife is being buried this morning. It will look most you odd. You can't have forgotten that. Well, one would think not, certainly. But his behaviour has been so unaccountable since she died that nothing would surprise me. Normally, of course, I'd say it was the effect of his wife's death. But I, I really don't think he was all that fond of her. She's not only left him. She'd turned her back on the church as well. And he'd find that very hard to forgive. He's a deeply devout man and a terribly proud one. Oh, dear, I'm sorry I'm talking too much and taking up your time. You're worried, aren't you? Oh, thanks, Sergeant. Well, sit down, sister. Thank you. Nothing like tea for calming the nerves. Yeah. Has Mr. Kappa been telling you some of his tales of witchcraft? He told you, too. I... I don't understand that man, such loose, irresponsible talk, such nonsense. And I've got the feeling he's looking for an ally, someone who'll take his side for once. Very probably. But he won't find it easy. He's not a likeable man. But he's he's brave. One has to acknowledge that. Brave, did you say? Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Kappa believes in the malignant power of these witches. He believes that it may soon be directed against him. If... If only this dreadful murder could be solved... You think that would shut him up? Inspector, if you could prove that Mrs. Kappa was killed for a perfectly understandable reason though, of course, a very dreadful one, 
then Mr. Capper could hardly persist in his theory that she died of witches. You think I've been a bit slow over this case, don't you? Oh, I, I wouldn't dream of criticising. Well, Mr. Capper will when he turns up. Well, it was a perfectly simple case at the beginning. It's just that it's been complicated by that old man and his witches. And my fault, really. I should have backed my own judgment and ignored Mr. Capper's rantings. It's not easy to ignore Mr. Capper. You can say that again. Plus, of course, the fact that this is my first murder case since promotion, and I've got to watch my P's and Q's more than ever. Well, it's full steam ahead now. I'm applying for a warrant this afternoon. Oh, uh, congratulations. Now I feel I've justified my promotion. Uh, biscuits, sir? Uh, no, thank you. No, the tea is quite sufficient. Oh. May I ask, the witches, had they anything to do with it? Now, sister, what do you think? You come in. Oh, Mr. Capper. You've just sold a missing persons case for me. I've sold more than that. Oh. Morning, sister. Good morning, Mr. Capper. Well, sister Alice has been worried about you. Did you know that nobody's seen you for three days? Nobody in Midport's seen me because I've been away. You're coming to the funeral, I hope, sister. If you'd like to wait in my car, I'll give you a lift. We shan't be a few minutes. Sister Alice is coming in my car. Please yourself, sister. You might wish later that you had waited in the car. Right now, Hagel, what progress have you made since Monday? It's all over, bar the shouting. I'm applying for a warrant this afternoon. Glad to hear it. Who for? Tom Doyle, of course. Who else? We've got witnesses who saw him at the fete on Saturday, Sister Alice being one of them. And there's a set of his prints on the boot of your car. The only thing that's holding me up is the motive. But we've had the motive all along. Your motive, Mr. Capper, which didn't satisfy me. A hard nut like Tom Doyle doesn't waste his time on witchcraft. Why else should he kill her? I'll tell you. There's a barman at the Devil's Kitchen called Clark who overheard a row between Doyle and your wife two nights before she died. Now, according to Clark, it was the mother and father of a row with blows struck on both sides. I know. That's where she got her black eye. More than likely. Now, the row was over a necklace which Doyle accused Mrs. Capper of stealing. What? Oh, I beg your pardon. Yes, naturally, I thought he'd got that bit the wrong way round, but Clark insists that he hasn't. Doyle wanted the necklace, but Mrs. Capper refused to give it to him and said he'd never find it. Doyle said he'd kill her if she didn't hand it over. But what good would that have done him? Oh, I agree, it was just his temper talking. A very nasty temper which has led him into trouble before. Is this all? The interesting thing to my mind is the necklace itself. They wouldn't have a stand-up fight over a string of beads. This could be the Norton Pearls. If Doyle stole them and your good lady took a fancy to them... What's all this got to do with my wife's death? I'm not interested in the Norton jewellery. Look, if you're trying to impress me with this story, Eagle, you're wasting your time. I got it out of Clark myself before I went to London. London? Yes. Why have you been there, Mr. Capper? When I joined the police force 25 years ago, I was taught to be thorough. Check... Check and double check was my motto. I don't need to check on Tom Doyle. I know him backwards. But you don't know Agnes Craft. And you've not checked on her. If you had, you wouldn't be sat there making a fool of yourself about stolen pearls. I told you right at the start, the witches are behind this. Oh, Mr. Capper, not again. You won't listen, will you? You won't be guided by my experience. I'll listen, but you don't make sense. Don't I? Don't I, just. Do I make sense to you, sister? Would you have checked on Miss Craft? It's hardly my place. You chose to sit in on this conversation. Now, come on. Mr. Caffer, we haven't got all day. If you know anything about Miss Craft, then tell me. I'm listening. Right. Now, these are photostat copies of reports of a case of witchcraft published by the Sunday Record in November 1954. The existence of this particular coven was brought to light by the death of a young girl. Her name was... Jennifer Preedy. She was 22. A student at Oxford. Intelligent, full of promise. And a member of the witches' cover. They were all students. What do you expect? No sense of responsibility. Uh, how did the girl die? There's nothing here. Fell well, under a car. Killed outright. Bottom of the page there, look. Uh. It was established that only a few hours before her death, she had threatened to betray the coven to the college authorities. And that those damn witches had prayed and plotted for her death. I'll lay you any odds you like. It's the same pattern. That's exactly what happened to Vera. There's another picture here. A man covering his face. Oh. No. And that caption's clear enough too, isn't it? G.K. Nicholson leaving the coroner's court. Now, may I see that? 
All along, I've had a feeling about Father Nicholson. I know a guilty man when I see one. When he wasn't trying to persuade me that the witches are harmless, he was trying to warn me to leave them alone and not interfere. What happened to these people, Mr. Capper, the students in the coven? Expelled a lot of them, sent down in disgrace. And Agnes Craft still crowed in triumph. Made no secret of what she'd done. Claimed the girl's death as proof of her own supernatural powers. You've really set the cat among the pigeons, haven't you? I've done my duty. And you're as pleased as punch. Don't be childish, man. These are facts. Somebody had to dig them up. But just how relevant are they? Exactly. Let's keep a sense of proportion. Your wife, Mr. Capper, was murdered. This pretty girl died by accident. Accident, my eye. Death by misadventure was the coroner's verdict. It's here in black and white. No mention of the supernatural. Accident. So that's it. You two are going to cover up for this ruddy priest. That's enough, Mr. Capper. Please, please, both of you. We must use our common sense. Sister, I don't doubt your loyalty to your parish priest, but... I hope I don't leave here doubting yours, Mr. Capper. There's something, surely, that you overlooked. If Father Nicholson were really a member of Miss Craft's coven, would your poor wife have made her confession to him? Well, would she? Come on, Mr. Capper. Well, she... she went in a panic. She... she didn't know what she was doing. She knew perfectly well. It was I who told her Father Nicholson was in the confession. But you can't deny this evidence at Oxford. No, but it's all a long time ago. Students grow up in 15 years. Not Miss Craft. You can't defend her. She's in it deeper than ever. Hagel, if you don't get these witches... Well, what do you expect me to do? Charge her up with conspiracy? Well, there was a conspiracy between 13 misfits in this town to kill my wife. And they succeeded. Now they're drunk with that success, there's no holding them. Already they're planning some new devilment. You know what tomorrow is, don't you? Tomorrow? Friday. It's the Feast of All Hallows, the most important festival in the witch's calendar. Tomorrow's your chance. Oh, uh, we mustn't forget the time. Eh? Oh, Lord, the funeral. Where are those photos? Right. Are you all right, sister? You look pale. It's a shock. I, I warned her. I'm perfectly all right, thank you. Certainly, Mr. Capper's revelations have been a shock, but there are always two sides to be considered. When we've heard Father Nicholson's explanation... <laughs> I hope you'll have the courtesy to listen to him, Mr. Capper. In all fairness, you owe him that. You not only condemned him unheard, you've taken pleasure in doing so. You've made a mockery of Christian duty. I knew I shouldn't be popular. You told me that yourself. But I didn't think you'd be the first to... I'll see you there. Oh, dear. Basically, he's right. It was his duty. No, it was mine. If I'd done it, I could have softened the blow. At last, Mr. Capper. Now, sister, after the service, would you be good enough to stay behind? I'll have to have words with your father, Nicholson. It might be easier for us both if you're there, too. chilly, isn't it, sister? It is, Inspector. Oh, funerals have a very humbling effect. There's so little one can do for those who grieve. You implied earlier on that Mr. Capper wasn't grieving. I said he was difficult to understand. His face never gives anything away. I suppose 25 years in the police force would make anyone look implacable. Mm. Not many people here, are there? Reporters, mostly. Why are you here, Inspector, apart now, from... Vera the... Kappa had some undesirable friends. I thought some of them might turn up today. If they were truly undesirable, they're not likely to come to her funeral. Yeah, you're wrong there, sister. One of them has. Excuse me. Pay me respect. You're not showing much respect for Mr. Kappa's feelings. He didn't show much for his car either, did you? His car? What are you on about? I don't even know his car. Then how come your prints are all over the boot? Look, there's a poor lady going to her rest, and all you can talk about is cars. That's very ill-bred of you, Now, Harry. listen to me. There now, there now. Our troubles are over. The good die young, they say, though touching 40, she left it a bit late. Old Capper's bearing up well for a man full of grief. Doyle, that woman there was murdered. For the last six months of her life, she was closer to you than anyone, and on the Wednesday before she died, you threatened to kill her. Harry, if that's a joke... It's in very bad taste. Why should I do that? She's the joker, chum, not me. 
She never gave you back the necklace, did she? Inspector, aren't you exceeding You've yourself? You've moved heaven and earth to find the Norton pearls. You even searched the old man's car boot. Oh, so we're back there, are we? Hey, no, did you see that? He's dropped something in the grave. A rosary. She asked for that to be done. Her church meant more to her than you ever did. Isn't that a touching thing? And just like Vera, the big dramatic exit. The time you were making yours. Get back to the club and stop there. You're going to answer some awkward questions later. I've had a lifetime of practice. Oh, go on. Or... What's up? Nothing. Nothing at all. Uh, emotion, Harry. I was very fond of that woman in my way. I'll be seeing you. Yeah. Fond of my Aunt Fanny. It wasn't grief for that glint in his eye. There's something I said. Oh, blast it. There must have been something. That was very moving, Father. I hope Mr. Capper was able to draw some comfort from it. I was relieved to see him. Disappearing for three days without explanation. He'll explain all too soon, I'm afraid. I don't understand him, sister, and that's the truth. He's gone racing away now without so much as a thank you. For some reason, he's come to resent me. He resents you very bitterly, Father. He makes no secret of it. He makes no secret either of the connection between you and Agnes Craft. Sister. Uh, here's Inspector Hagel. You can trust him, Father. Right. Now that's over, Vicar. I'd like a word with you. Now let's walk over this way. We don't want those reporters interrupting us. You look very grim, Inspector. I feel very grim. You've deliberately withheld information in a criminal case. A fine thing for a clergyman. You've also made me look an abject fool in Kappa's eyes. Not that I care what he thinks, but he's hell-bent on making trouble. Yes, he's made that clear. And your behavior hasn't helped. Kappa's provided evidence of an association between you and Miss Craft. An old association. It's quite... Old or new, it's nothing to do with it. Now, why didn't you tell me? Tell you that Miss Craft and I practiced witchcraft at Oxford? How would that have helped? <laughs> I'm not proud of the fact. I should think not. And I'll be the one to say what's helpful and what isn't. You've got a lot to answer for, Vicar. Another woman has died, and this time... This time, as before, Miss Craft and I had nothing to do with it. Now, you have a right to be angry. But... I have every no, no, right please, to be... have the decency to hear me out. I will tell you what happened 15 years ago, and when I've told you, I'll have to make Kappa understand it, too. You'll have a job. He must be made to understand, otherwise there's no knowing what harm he may do. For once in his life, that stubborn old man must see reason. Dumb. Scammer, if I'm not disturbing you, may I come in? Aye. Thank you. Aye, what splendid chrysanthemums against that wall. They look just like a Van Gogh. You have an excellent eye, Mr. Kappa. I'm not blessed with green fingers myself. I'm afraid the vicarage garden is a disgrace. I thought this morning you needed a bit of attention. Well, sit down. You've not come here to talk about gardening. No, I haven't. Hegel tells me you've looked up the details of that affair at Oxford. You don't deny what happened. Well, of course I don't. I've never attempted to. But I've tried to forget it. Well, I'm trying to remind you. Because the same thing's happened again. Only this time it's my wife that's dead. So don't ask me to be impartial. You're very quick to condemn what we did that night. And you're right, of course. But can you imagine how we felt when we learned that that poor girl had died? Aye. Drunk with power. But that power was part of the illusion. With one exception, we were all shocked into our senses. The exception being Agnes Croft. Well, she's a very remarkable woman, you know, with undoubted spiritual gifts. She's a prime example of what I would call a, a person apart. <laughs> she has to be. That's what witches breed on. But faith and fear weren't enough for her. Oh, no. As maiden of the coven, she puts herself above such things. But to keep that faith and fear alive in her followers... She was ready to do murder. And is your attitude going to change her? Certainly her creed is vicious and absurd. I'm with you all the way on that. But you're not going to defeat it by persecuting her? What then? Turn me back on it. Ignore her. Can't you get it into your head? Miss Craft had nothing to do with Jennifer Preda's death. I know she claims she had, but no one in their right mind is going to believe her. Aren't they? Now, look, I know Miss Craft a good deal better than you do. Once she was a fine woman with a keen intellect and a great sense of humor. But for 15 years, simply because of her beliefs, she's been hounded by ignorant, bullying, frightened men. Meaning me? Meaning all men like you who can't control their prejudice or superstition. Will you mention that in your article for the record? Ah, 
Now we're coming. We have to have this out, Mr. Cather. Have you considered what's at stake if you revive this scam? <laughs> Your livelihood for a start. Oh, much more than that. The reputation of the church itself. Church? You talk about the church. You! If the bishop were ordained, you had known what I know now. Great heavens, man. Of course he knew. You don't think I'd conceal the facts from him? You conceal them from everybody else. And there's one fact now sticking out for all of us to see. My wife and Jennifer Preedy were murdered. Behind their death stand you and Agnes Craft. You can't conceal that. By God, you'll be begging for charity by the time I've done. There's no point in arguing further. I've got the names. Eight names out of 13 I've got. I'm not bluffing. I swore I'd identify the creatures in your coven, and I have. Mrs. Harris from the Station Hotel. <laughs> Joyce Pritchard. Dr. Rowley. Lady Norton. Lady Norton? You thought I didn't know. Kappa, you're going to land yourself in serious trouble. I've got proof, man. Well, if it's the same caliber proof you have against me. Someone's got to take a stand against all this rottenness. Already it's breeding on itself. I'm not the only one putting pressure on. What are you talking about? Blackmail. What? Someone's blackmailing these creatures. Ask Lady Norton if you don't believe me. She's living in terror. Is this another of your fantasies? You'll not dismiss it like that when our blackmailing pal gets round to you. And when he's done, don't talk charity to him. You'll want more than that. Are you quite sure of this? Taking me seriously at last, are you? Think the old fool might know what he's on about, after all. I didn't think it possible. You two right, you didn't. You and Agle and others like you. Witches. <laughs> They're good for a laugh, and so is anyone who says otherwise. But I know Nicholson. I know better. You were priest, and only 15 years ago, you were one of them. You and Agnes Croft up to your ears in depravity. I wonder, you know, if you'd feel so vindictive if you hadn't a grudge against these witches grudge? What are you on about? I've got no grudge. But your wife. Oh. <laughs> you know, I'd... I'd almost forgotten. Want a scotch? No, thanks. Only buried her this morning, and already I've forgotten. Of course, I'd... I'd have seen her for six months. Not a dear on my own. But like she was dead all that time. Does that shock you? No. It's sad, but... You didn't have to live with her. My fault, I suppose. Old enough to be a father. We never had a thing in common. She had a lot of courage. Courage? Vera. Mm, and concern for you. Look, I don't know what she told you in the confessional, What but... she told me was dreadful. But her anxiety for you was clear. For me? Anxiety? She desperately wanted to talk to you. Scream at me, you mean? She came to my stall at the fate, hysterical. Humiliating me. Then she told you about the witches. She didn't tell me anything. I got shot of her quick as I could. Tell me what about the witches? That they were going to kill her, you mean? No. No, I said she was concerned for you. It's you the witches want to kill. It's your likeness they made and sacrificed you. They've willed you dead tomorrow night. I, th I thought you knew that. Here, here. Come and sit down. You. You sure? Quite sure. I asked Miss Croft. I thought you knew. I did. I felt it days ago. Malice, hate, creeping to me. Oh, now hold on, Mister Capper. Don't tell me you believe that deeply in witchcraft. You can't afford to treat it lightly. I know. I've seen. You've seen too. You believed yourself once. I. I thought I did. Look, I... I'm sorry for what I said earlier. I'm sorry. I... don't want to be alone. I must have someone with me. Yes, of course. I, I'll tell you what I'll do. I have a confirmation class at eight, and I can't cut that. But if I go now, I can look in at the mother house and ask Sister Alice if she'll come and sit with you. How will that do? Yeah, I... I, I don't want to be a bother. No, it's not the least bother. You know Sister Alice. She'll only be too pleased. Of this feeling, sense of danger. I'm afraid I've been tactless. I never thought you'd mind so much. It's only mumbo jumbo. Truly, it is. It's not pleasant. But... Look, it's still light. Why don't you get in some gardening before Sister arrives? What we were discussing earlier can wait, can't it? You mean the article? Will you postpone any decision for the moment? 
And try not to brood about Miss Craft. Really, she's not the ogre you imagine. She has her problems, too. Shut that door and don't walk Get out on me. Get a hold on yourself. The whole place can hear you. The club's packed to the roof. Shut the door. I could kill you. God help me, I could. I underestimated your driving force, didn't I? Disgusting, unbridled greed. God knows I'd never trust you with a penny piece. But I didn't think you'd betray me. Betray you? What sort of talk is that? In a matter of months, preying on her treasured respectability, you've had a thousand pounds and a pearl necklace out of Lady Norton alone. And how did you She find told out? me herself less than an hour ago. And she's not the only one, is she? Which of the others are you blackmailing? Who else have you battened on? No need for others. Sarah Norton's got more money than wrinkles. The pearls alone Is are... that the truth? Now, Aggie... It never struck you, did it, that she'd blame me? That she'd think I'd failed her? She trusted me, they all do, to preserve their anonymity, and I do protect them from dangerous fanatics like Barnard Kappa. I can cope with people like him, but you, you've ruined everything I've built up in this lousy town. What's ruined? What's spoiled for you? The woman's putting on an act. You don't want to take any notice don't of her. Don't be a fool. I'm talking sense to you. That old harridan's as sly as Barney Kappa when it comes to making a show. You should have seen him at the funeral this morning, face as solid as a wardrobe, mourning fit to break your heart. Righteous, vicious fool. I'll squash him like a fly. You'll do nothing of the kind. It's already done. Then undo it, Aggie, I'm telling you. There's been enough coppers in the devil's kitchen this last week. The coven is my concern. I said undo it. You hit me, Tom, I'll hit you back. I'm not Vera Kappa. You don't ride roughshod over me. <coughs> now see what you've done upsetting yourself. <coughs> Aggie, let's be done with harsh words and unpleasantness. Put it behind us and start again. It's the best time there could be for a new beginning. Don't tell me I've won a convert in you. Maggie, I know the powers that are given to you. Haven't I seen them working? Don't I know what you're capable of? What are you getting at, Tom? That's my girl. Now, listen, listen. Tom Doyle's got it all worked out. Come tomorrow night, they'll have cause to remember the witches of Midport. Oh, damn his eyes. Pound to a penny, that's Hegel. I'm getting tired of that fella. Well, now, here's a surprise. I'd never have guessed it. Come on in. This is a great army you do us, Father. I was directed out here by your doorman. I know it's a busy time of evening for you, but I must see Miss Craft urgently. Well, she'll be delighted. Won't you, Aggie? It really is important. I don't imagine you walk dog collared into a dubious club as the matter were trivial. I can give you five minutes, Nick, and then I have to entertain these people. We'll stay and watch you, won't you, Father? Well, Aggie's a great marvel at fortune-telling. You've no idea. Funny how superstitious people can be, isn't it, Father? Superstition dies hard. Uh, you've not been able to upset it much, have you? I'll see you downstairs, Aggie. You were right about him. He is a dangerous man. Less than five minutes, Nick. Sit down. Aggie, earlier tonight I was at Kappa's house. I told him of your elaborate threat. I thought Vera had done that. So did I, but we were wrong. Aggie, that old man is abject with fear. He's not putting on an act. He's convinced you mean him harm. I told you before, I mean him the ultimate harm. What is this? Have you come here to plead for Barnard Kappa? Partly. Save your breath. And partly to warn you. Don't you see? If you persist in this, Kappa will point to your malice as proof that you killed Vera. He'll say you're unhinged. Nick, you know the power of Apollyon as well as I do. You've not forgotten it in 15 years. Tried to, perhaps, taken refuge in a fool's paradise. What are you getting at? You never could accept that I killed Jennifer, could you? You refuted the testimony of your senses, and you've done so ever since. You didn't think it possible. Well, it wasn't possible. Anyone else. Maybe I would have believed it. But... The great dramatic. Poor Nick, you're still going through hell. Even hell can change in 15 years. But the wheel comes full circle. It has now, hasn't it? These last few days since you and I came face to face again, the past has been brilliant in your mind. I've relived it, Yes. Oh, what a lot we had in common once in those old days. The things we shared and loved and gloried in. Now you call it hell. <laughs> and me, what do you call me, Nick? For 15 years I've been the wandering Jew in your life, haven't I? The lurking threat to your peace of mind. That peace is going, Nick, and this time you'll not regain it. This time you'll not be able to fool yourself. In a few hours from now, when the light comes creeping over the harbour... The burden of death will have been laid on Barnard Kappa. 
It will have been carried under the wings of the dark angel and nailed to the old man's door. Oh, keep this. Can't be your customers downstairs. I look at you. You. I despise you. You who oppose me with the blessing of the church. You who once stood with me at the altar of Apollyon and defiled that god, that church. Even when Vera Kappa died, Vera, who once had followed me, you usurped my place and laid her in a Christian grave. But what else could I do? She wasn't yours to bury. All my life I've tried to build my faith, to create something for others to believe in. And I end up in this stinking town with nothing, nothing at all. Every night in my dreams I see your face and Vera's and Jennifer Preedy's swimming in my mind and smiling, smiling. Aggie. The last thing I want is their pity. My <coughs> poor Aggie. Don't, don't touch me. That's all we need now, isn't it? To rebuild the past completely. That's all we need to recreate the memory. Go home, Nick. There's nothing you can do. Maybe soon... The hate will be burned out. I'm heating the milk for the cocoa, Mr. Capper. I suggest you take some aspirin and try to get some sleep. It won't be much of an early night for you, sister. Quarter past twelve already. I'm blessed with an iron constitution, though I must admit my legs are aging fast. <laughs> oh, oh, that's better. Now, why don't you sit down? You'll do no good peering through the curtains every few minutes. Forewarned is forearmed. I like to be prepared. Oh, damn it! They switched off the street lights. I can't see a thing. There's nothing to see. There won't be either. I think I've brought you out in a wild goose chase, eh? Mr. Capper, you've shown some sense this evening in agreeing not to write your article. I never said that. Well, in having second thoughts, then. Why not show a little more and admit that you're frightened of your own imagination? Are you telling me I've imagined the deaths of two women? You've invested them with a spurious, melodramatic... Oh, oh I give up. You see the devil everywhere. Quiet. Turn that wireless off. Oh, the milk. Excuse me. 12.20... Well, if she's coming, she must come soon. Ah, she's bound to come. She's laid the curse. What's that? Sister! Sister! Oh, what a mess. A milk stain, sir. Sister, she's here. She, she's outside in the garden. I saw her through the window. Miss Crow? I saw her. Oh, she hasn't rung the bell. She's not paying a social call. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mr. Capper, we, we can't stand out here holding our breath while Miss Croft does whatever she's supposed to do. I'm not going out there. Well, I am. If I stay here doing nothing, I'll get as jittery as you, and then where will we be? That, that sounds like a fire. It is. I told you they prayed my death on Friday. Now on the eve of all hallows, they're bringing it home. We'll see about that. Mind, please. It's no use. Mind. Don't open that door. If you'll kill us both. What? Good gracious. Mr. Capper, get something to beat with. There, there's something burning on the door. It, it's been nailed there. And set alight. Uh, don't just stand there. It, it might take a hold. No. No. Oh, impossible. Pass me that old coat. Where? Where is she? Miss Craft, you mean? There's no one here. Oh, ever it was nailed, this... Why, it's a doll. You see it? I, a homemade doll. Soaked in petrol. A wizened old man nailed to the door and burning... Ah! Oh, Mr. Capper. Mr. Capper. <laughs> Morning, Vicar. Uh, that looks hot work. Uh, morning, Inspector. 
Yes, I felt I ought to make some effort after seeing Mr. Caffer's garden yesterday. Things won't grow for me, but any fool can mow a lawn. You sound a bit depressed, sir. I take it you know what's happened to Mr. Caffer. Yes, Sister Alice phoned me last night. I gather he fell and hit his head. That's about it. And not recovered consciousness, apparently. Mm. Rather annoying. There were some questions I wanted to ask him. You're ignoring the part Miss Craft played in the business, are you? Well, it, it seems hardly worth consideration. I wouldn't go so far as that. A silly childish trick, of course. From all I've been hearing lately, I expected the old fool to be turned into a donkey, at least. Not that that'd be very difficult. Uh, Inspector, you mustn't think... No, that... no, I mustn't. Of course I mustn't. Irritating old buzzard, though. I thank the Lord I never had him as my chief. It uh, doesn't strike you as odd, then, that uh, Miss Craft should be content with nailing a burning effigy of Kappa to his front door? I don't know about odd. It was um, effective, Inspector. Not half as effective as slamming the lid of a car boot on someone's neck. It might be, in the long run. And you don't really believe that. Look, Inspector, to you and me, that burning effigy might be silly and childish, but to Kappa, it appeared as a manifestation of the malice he's aroused in this town. It wasn't a crude, rough doll he saw nailed to that door, but himself. Oh, come now. He's a hard Look, he enough. believes. He accepts the inevitable. He sees this action of the witches as a death wish laid upon him. Oh, he's a nutter, then. Well, I've said so all along. This case is full of them. He has a blind faith in the power of evil. Certainly, that's unusual today. Well, there's one good thing come out of it. He'll be out of commission tonight. Tonight? It's all Hallow's Eve, Vicar. Don't say you've forgotten. Ah. The witches will be coming into their own tonight. Yes, you, uh, you think Miss Craft will hold a Sabbath? Well, I'm not thinking so much of Miss Craft, actually. No, there's another hand in this. Has been all along. A Doyle. But he's a law unto himself. He couldn't care less about the witches. I can't agree with you there, either. But didn't you know? He's been blackmailing people in the coven. Uh, yes. Uh, Kappa hinted as much last night. He doesn't miss much, does he? Um, Vicar, with your permission and that of the bishop and whoever else, I want to station men in the churchyard tonight. It's a situation I'd have to play by ear, but with all the signs, it should pay off. What signs? Oh, signs... Now, I'm not talking about omens and not talking about witchcraft at all. I'm ignoring the supernatural for once. It's much easier when you do that, as I'm sure Sister Alice would agree. I... I don't know what you're on about. You will, sir. Well, have I your permission, then? Uh, Hegel, you put me in a very awkward position. I want to help, but I, I... I don't see how I can. If you're right, these people will desecrate the churchyard. How can I allow that? If I had men stationed there, any damage would be prevented. It's up to you, of course, and I wouldn't dream of asking if I didn't think it was worthwhile, but uh, it's either that or get an exhumation order. Exhumation? Yes, and everything will be that bit more unpleasant. But exhume whom? Uh, Mrs. Capper? I think that's what people have in mind. What people? Oh. That's right, the witches. It always comes back to them. Why are they doing this? A week ago, we hadn't even heard of them. We'd no idea of their existence. Not till Mr. Capper started shouting it from the rooftops. He's a real stirrer, isn't he? Yes, and there's no knowing where it might all end. No. It could end tonight, you know. It depends on you. All right, Hagel. Station your men. Jolly good. We'll meet in the churchyard then, all being well. And all being well, we'll finish this evil business. And keep your fingers crossed. Ah, it's a half past eleven. I wonder if Mr. Caffer's with us yet. I really must have words with him. Doctor's just left, Inspector. He suggested taking him to hospital, but I thought it would be better if I stayed with him here. I'll arrange relief duties with one of the other sisters. That's very good of you. Not at all. I'm, I'm qualified to nurse people, and the hospitals carry a big enough burden already. True. I'm afraid he's still unconscious. Did you want to talk to him urgently? Uh, just as soon as I can. Uh, would you mind if I got a constable to sit with him? To take notes, you mean... Not at all. It seems an excellent idea. Well, he's moving. Uh, sister, look at his eyes. Shh, quiet. Uh, 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 relax, Mr. Capper. You're safe and comfortable. How do you feel? Fire. Uh, Mr. Capper. No, please, let me. The fire's out, Mr. Capper. It's out, and there's been no damage. A curse brought in the fire. Warned you. 
unconscious. There's no danger anymore. You fell and hit your head. Don't fall. Leah, she saw. She knew. Came to warn me. I couldn't. The priest have told me. You told him what? Is he delirious? His temperature's high, certainly, and his pulse none too steady. Shall I get a doctor? No. No doctor. Don't fall. I... Now, now, you'll soon be all right. Never understood. Never believed any of you. Now you try believing this, Mr. Capper. The coven won't be meeting after tonight. The witches are finished in Midport. In a matter of hours... He can't hear you. He's lost consciousness again. I'll see you out, Inspector. Was that true, what you just told him? Hmm? You weren't deceiving him. About the witches? Rather not. I've laid it all on with your father, Nicholson. Between us, we'll settle these witches. Oh. The nights are really getting cold now, aren't they? Yeah. There's a frost, I think. Well, if we are cold, think what it'll be like for the Glee Club. They can't be going to perform in their birthday suits this weather, can they? It's customary, part of the ceremony. And rather them than me. There are ointments, herbal mixtures. You can rub them into the skin for warmth. Mm, old wives' remedy, eh? And drugs. Uh, yes, but not the kind you'd be interested in. Yeah, I never thought I'd be interested in a witch's Sabbath. You never can tell, can you? What time do they start? Midnight. Uh-huh. Curtain up. Where? I mean, it should be. Uh, you know, I'm rather glad Kappa's still out of the way. He was bound to interfere. He'll be furious. He's missed it. I'm a bit worried about him. He's got worse since I saw him this morning. You know he's in a coma. Sister Alice still with him? Ah, uh, yes. She's a marvel. Yes, she's in good hands. Couldn't be better. Hey, up. Where? By the south wall. Good Lord. It looks as though the procession's coming up out of the ground. Ah. They're using the old crypt. Mm -hmm. Thank heavens for the moon. I can see Miss Craft and Doyle behind her. And what's he carrying? Mm, looks like a shovel. Well, they're dressed too, most of them. There's mainly the men. The men with the shovels. That's Frank Proctor. And who's that woman? Oh, no. Yes, Sarah Norton. Mr. Capper has proved right again. You wonder if he's ever wrong. I'm surprised they risk the music. Oh, it's necessary. We're on the outskirts of the town, small risk of being heard. Ah, they're forming a circle. Look, around the grave. Isn't that usual? Yes. But the summoning. I'll get a surprise when we answer it. Hold up, Vicar. Not long to go now. Oh, thou most puissant prince and protector, proud Apollyon. Behold thy servants on the threshold of the circle. By Lucifer, Satanthus, and Beelzebub, I conjure, bind, and charge thee to send thy servant without horror or deformity to penetrate this circle and give power to thy earthly servants. By the triple crown of Cerberus, I charge thee, O most powerful and princely lord, What's she on about? She's summoning the spirit of the dead. She intends to convey Mrs. Kappa's soul to hell. Strong stuff, eh? Half-baked rubbish. Hegel, you see what they're doing, violating the grave. Mrs. Kappa's grave, what I tell you. Well, now they're lighting a fire. What's that in age of? Show the spirit of the dead where to head for? Shh! By the great sea of glass, by the four beasts which lodge before the throne, by the fire which is about the throne. Answer me and perform all that I desire. By Apollyon... Do I, I can't allow this. Sit down. It'll do and no good. Just a few minutes more. I want that coffin raised. Out of the 
way there, Frank. Let me climb down. Inspector, what's going on? Doyle's jumped in the grave. That's no part of the ritual. I think the party's about to break up, Vicar. Miss Kraft's putting on a bold front, though, trying to keep order in the ranks. I'll bet she could murder Doyle for this. Through spirit have since deceased to appear before me. Over by the gate, Parker. There's one trying to climb the wall. Sergeant, I want all these people in the vans in two minutes. Sir, if they've got any questions, they can ask them at the station. Rose, put that fire out. Climb out of that grave, Doyle. You're under arrest. Get things in perspective, copper. Bowden, Landry, get him out. Yes, sir. Give us your hand. Don't be petty, lad. Give us your hand or I'll hold you up by the collar. There. Get your hands off me, Hegel. You're too flat. Get out of my pockets. Hold him, you two. I want to know what Mr. Doyle carries around at night. Well, well, well. Isn't that a pretty sight? I put him in the van with the others. Bowden, get down to the crypt and fetch their clothes. Yes, sir. They may like dancing in the all together, but we can't put them in the charge room like that. Ah, oh, there you are, Vicar. Well, I, I hope you're satisfied, Hegel. Satisfied? I'm delighted. Sorry about the grave. Nasty, but at least the coffin's not disturbed. Yeah. Hey, what about this? Hmm? Why, it's a rosary. Where did you get this? It's not a rosary. Look carefully. Uh, it's not easy in this light. Well, they're beads. Poorly strung. Done in a panic. She said they were hidden where he'd never find them. These are the Norton Pearls, sir. What? In Mrs. Capper's grave? A bit macabre, I grant you. But a damn good hiding place. She disguised them as a rosary to keep them hidden from Doyle. Then when she knew the witches meant to kill her... She passed them over to you, yeah. asking that they should be buried with her. Tortuous minds, some women. And, and when did Doyle guess what she'd done? At the funeral. He tumbled to it just before I did. And this fiasco tonight was his doing, not oh, Miss Crowd's. I've no doubt he suggested it. It seemed the only way of getting the jewels back in a hurry. Well, there they go. If you want to see Miss Craft at all... Thank you. That's thoughtful. What, um, what do you intend to charge her with? Willful damage seems a likely start. She's made a right mess of your churchyard. And then you'll charge Doyle with the murder. Doyle? Oh, no. I was all set to do so, as you know, but Mr. Capper persuaded me otherwise. He was quite right, as usual. He's convinced Miss Craft is the killer. But I don't understand. You, you just said... Uh, Vicar, what's your opinion of witchcraft? Is it all Mr. Capper cracks it up to be? Inspector, you should know by now you shouldn't listen to Capper. He's steeped in superstition. Ah, now you've put your finger on it there. Let's go and tell him what's happened. The car's over here. Come on. Soon be there at this rate. Hmm. Someone's had a hard day. You don't know who Mr. Capper's doctor is, do you? Mm, uh, I think it's Dr. Barton in the old town. Why? It might be an idea to have him with us. You know what a stickler the old man is for procedure. Oh, Lord. Excuse me, I can't think straight. It's just that I don't want Mr. Capper having cause for complaint. Complaint? About what? Well, the way I carry out an arrest, of course. He might say that as a sick man... But you mean you're going to arrest Mr. Capper? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I thought you'd worked it out for yourself. Sister Alice has. At least I think she has. He came into my office yesterday saying what a proud man he was, how difficult it was for him to forgive his wife. And she's spot on, of course. That old man's not the type to tolerate a scandal. But he was the one who threatened the scandal. Oh, I don't mean about you and the witches. No, Capper saw a juicy scandal looming up at the fate when his wife put in an appearance. He kept her very nicely out of everyone's way for six months. And while she'd been reveling in obscurity with Tom Doyle, he'd been making a name for himself with his memoirs and the record. She was the last person he wanted to see at the fate. Everything was going fine for him. Crowds of people wanting his autograph, he among them. Proud as a peacock he was that afternoon. His personal friend, Lord Catesby, opening the fate and... Then his wife turns up screaming hysterics. And she was trying to warn him. Warn him of the danger. He never gave her a chance. I saw that myself. He said something to her that shut her up. And she went from his stall to the car park. It's a pity I didn't follow her. I was feeling a bit thirsty. Bagel, surely you can't prove any of this. I have a job proving anything against that cocky devil. But he's the only person with a motive for killing the woman. 
Doyle might have done it in a black rage, but the Norton Pearls were at stake, and where big money's concerned, our Tom can control his temper. And you'll rule out Miss Kraut? Of course. She tried to kill Capper. Yes, the way she's always tried, by getting the devil to do her dirty work. She's convinced that because she asked him, the devil snuffed out Mrs. Capper and Jennifer Preedy, and Lord knows who else. I bet it never crossed her mind to lay a finger on Capper herself. She'd regard that as usurping the devil's prerogative. Hello, here we are. We get ourselves a bad name waking up the neighbors. Are you uh, going to charge him now? I'm going to play it by ear. I told you, he's a tricky bird. Well, you're quick off the mark, sister. I heard the car. I was expecting Dr. Barton. I called him 20 minutes ago. Oh, it's wrong. Is he deeper in the coma? He's dead. What? what? I'm afraid he's dead, Inspector. Just 20 minutes ago it was, without regaining consciousness. But it was just a blow on the head. Not that bad. Well, that couldn't kill him. Perhaps not. But he died just the same as to Hegel. I think of his fear of the witches. I'm determined to be in perfect form for Monday, Father. Monday? What's happening then? It's the feast of St. Hilda of Whitby. She's a great favourite of mine. Ah, St. Hilda. One of the virgin martyrs, wasn't she? Well, rather more than that, Father. She was an intelligent virgin, and that's all too rare today. Ah. Have you finished hearing confessions? Yes, we'd better get a move on. It's nearly seven. We don't want to be late for the harvest supper. I'd rather not. The bishop would never forgive us. Come on, then. The car's in Church Street. Oh, no. Afraid so. Another latecomer. Father, the bishop is waiting. I think this is one of those rare occasions when the clergy must take precedence over the laity. <laughs> In Malice at Autumn's End by John Hyatt, the part of the Reverend G.K. Nicholson was played by John Bentley. Sister Alice by Margot Boyd, Barnard Kappa by John Gabriel, Inspector Hagel, Wilfred Carter, Miss Craft, Maddie Head, Tom Doyle, Alan Barry, and Vera Kappa, Margaret Wolfitt. The play was produced by Norman Wright.